Okay, welcome, Shalom, Masechta, Babakama, Daf, Pei, Vav, Ahmed, Aleph. That's where we're holding, we're holding about in the middle of the page where there's two dots that say, Boishe Sakol, Pia Mavayish, Vamis Bayish. We said that the Mishnah explains that there is a key of Boishe. So, as we know, one of the five payments is a payment that you pay if you embarrass somebody. That's called Boishe. And the Mishnah, the way the Mishnah says you pay that is according to the Mavayesh and the Mitvayesh. The Mavayesh is the person who does the embarrassing, the, 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 the perpetrator of the, of the Chavala, of the crime over here, the damage. And according to the person who got damaged, the damaged party. Meaning to say that everybody's level of embarrassment is slightly different. Right? If we talk about the person who's doing the crime, the embarrasser, right? the, 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 the perpetrator, so if he's a very bad person, then it's, 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 it's more embarrassing for somebody to be, to be embarrassed by a more bad person than a less, the, the less bad person. So the voices of a, of a, of a, of a, of a more prestige, uh, prestige person would be more. And if it was just a, 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 ra- a random average person on the street, if they embarrass you, it's not so much. Similarly, on the, on the, on the side of the victim, if the victim is a person who's very bad and very fit and very well known and everything, then his embarrassment will be more. And if it's somebody also is not so much in the limelight and nobody cares about them so much, then there is less. That's what the Mishnah says. Now the Gemara wants to discuss in whose opinion does the Mishnah go according to? Mani Mestis. Who is the Mishnah according to? Loi Rebbe Meir, Loi Rebbe Yehuda. It's not Rebbe Meir and it's not Rebbe Yehuda. Elo Rebbe Shimon. <coughs> And Rabbi Shimoni. It is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. Who is this Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon? That we're saying it's not Rabbi Meir and not Rabbi Yehuda. Rather, it is Rabbi Shimon. The Snan, because we learned. Now, usually, Snan means a Mishnah. Most, most majority of places in time, when the, Gemara, when the Gemara uses the term Snan, it's bringing a Mishnah. Over here, we're actually not bringing a Mishnah. We're bringing a Brisa. So that's why in a lot of the Gemaras, you'll see on the side, or some way, if it's a, if it's a, or it's a Hadar Gemara, there'll be a little base there, which says, Sarich Loima de Sanya. Or it's on the, we, we have to change the gear, so it's a Tanya, because Tanya means a Bryce. We're going to bring a Bryce to the explains, Rebbe Meir, Rebbe Yudan, Rebbe Shem. Vakulan, and all of them, in all cases of Boishas, Royan Oisan, Ke'ilu Hem, Bnei Choyrin, Sheyordu Menich Seyen, Shehen Bnei Avram, Yitzchak, V'yakov, Divir Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Meir holds, you do not take the financial situation of the perpetrator or the victim in mind at all. That doesn't go into the cheshman. You look at everybody as if they were people that they, they, they got bankrupt from their nechassim. They've got, as if they've got no, 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 no nechassim. Basically, we, we equal everybody out. We don't look at it. We don't say our oh, rich person would have had more boishas and the poor person would have less boishas. We rather equal everybody out. By assuming that everybody has, has, has got no nechassim, and we evaluate the boishes according to that. Why does Rebbe exactly do that? So I think there's a slight difference between what Rashi says and what Toysi says over here. Rashi explains that um, we do not look at the Oni to be makel for him, and the Asher to be Oshroi Shahare Ain. I'm just reading Rashi. Rashi says Shahare Ain Lidamei Boishtoi Soy. There's no, there'll be no end. If you look at how much a rich person, how much embarrassment he could get, then there's like no end to it. You know, I don't know. Kina, Taib, and Kovod can take a person out of the world, and someone who's so into their own Kovod can erase the price of their boishas would be just too much. You know, that would be Ain Ladavar Soy for us, he says. So therefore, Rabbi Meir's opinion is you, you treat everybody equally, and we don't look at their financial status. Tosis, if I'm not mistaken, seem, seemed to learn slightly different. He understood that it's, it's, it's not. It's not always so uh, so clear cut that a rich person gets more boishas and, and a poor person gets less. Sometimes you can have a rich person that has less boishas. Sometimes you can have a poor person that gets more boishas. So therefore, we equal everything out. In any event, Rabbi Meir's opinion is is that we look at everybody as if they're as if they're equal, and then you evaluate the boishas like that. So the Mishnah therefore does not fit with Rabbi Meir. The Mishnah which says Akol lefi hamavayish vahamis bayish, which says you do evaluate according to the perpetrator and the victim. How much how, how they're holding in their monetary assets, that's how you evaluate the boys. Rebbe Meir doesn't look at that, so he doesn't fit with Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Yehuda Oimer Hagodol Lefi Goidloi, Bakoton Lefi Kotlo. Rebbe Yehuda does say that we look at a person who has got more money or more stature 
Course, that's more Boisha than a cotton lefi cotton oil. So seemingly the Mishnah could fit with Rabbi Yehuda, but we'll see in a second that it can't. We're just going to quote the entire Brisa first. Rabbi Shimon Oimer, Ashirin Royen Oison Ki Ilu Hen Venei Choirin Shiordum Nichseyen. Very rich people. We we don't view them as, as they are rich with their with their stature of being rich and a lot. We we view them as if they've come down from their nechosim and what the voices would be for them. Aniim kepchusin shebahem. And the Aniim, even less than them, out of them, even, even less than those people, that's how you do the evaluation. So basically, to summarize, we have the price with three opinions. Rabbi Meir says everybody's equal. The, the way you evaluate Boishas, we're only talking about now Boishas. The way you evaluate Boishas, the theme from the, the, the he of the thief of the, that you have to make for embarrassing someone. Rabbi Meir says everybody's equal. You look at everybody rich or poor as if they're stripped from their nechassim. And they're just basic people. How much would the boys just be? Rabbi Yehuda does say the middle opinion that you uh, that someone who's got more assets, more money, is bigger boys and less less. And Rabbi Shimon also goes according to their value, but he says the rich people you take them, strip them, then across them and see what they are. And the poor people even less than that, even the the, the, the lowest of the low, they, you evaluate the boys or feed that. Now the Gemara speaks out. Yes, parents. I'm surprised that they're talking about boys is something that. Right, but presumably yes. uh, the, for the financial status is only used to determine that such a person's feelings, according to those opinions, would normally be more. Because I, I presume that financial status means you're more in the public eye. You're more followed after by people. You have more followers, so to speak. And therefore, when this action is done to you, when it's done to the Queen of England or it's done to Bill Gates or something that they've spat in, the, you know, that's in the news. That's, that's world, that's spread around. That voice, just that <laughs> feeling, therefore, he, that's a, that would show that the feeling he has of embarrassment would be more than somebody who, you know, doesn't have that financial stature. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. So the Gemara says money. Who is this submission to go according to? E Rabbi Meir, if according to the first opinion, the price of Rabbi Meir, Miss Nisan Ketani Hakol Lefi Eva Vaisha Misbaish. The Mishnah says everything goes according to the value goes according to the person who did it and the person who got embarrassed. For Rabbi Meir, Kulu Bahadi Hadadi Din. Whereas Rabbi Meir equates everybody. So therefore, the Mishnah, as we just spoke out, does not fit with Rabbi Meir. E Rabbi Yehuda, but maybe the Mishnah should fit with Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda said. That we do do a god of lefi god loy back cotton lefi cotton loy. Here we don't mean a god, or literally, we mean a god in his assets. We might see that soon, but so the mission should fit with Rabbi Yehuda, but the Gemara says it can't for a different reason. Miss Nisan Ketani Hamavayish Esa Suma Chayov. The Mishnah teaches if a person uh, embarrasses a blind person, right? The blind person is the victim over here. You embarrass the blind person, you are Chay. That's what the Mishnah says. Which Mishnah said that? Not our Mishnah, but the next Mishnah, which we should see today, hopefully, on Pevav Ahmed Bey's, the, the coming up Mishnah on Ahmed Bey's says that someone who embarrasses a blind person has to pay, right? <clears throat> the, that's what the Mishnah, that's what the Mishnah holds. That's the talent of, of our Mishnah holds, assuming that the first time and the second time are the same Mishnah. That's what we hold. The Ilu Rebbe Yehuda Oimer, whereas Rebbe Yehuda says, Suma ain loy boishas. Rebbe Yehuda is of the opinion that a Suma does not get boishas. We think right now maybe that means he doesn't pay boishas if he damages, and he doesn't collect boishas if he does damage. In any event, let's say we assume that he doesn't collect boishas when he gets when he gets damaged. So that means that Rabbi Yehuda couldn't fit with our mission. Again, for a different reason, for the for the reason of the fact how you evaluate boishas, actually Rabbi Yehuda fits very nicely with our mission. We look at the God of 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 But there's another reason why Rabbi Yehuda can't fit with our mission because our mission says our mission meaning the next mission says that. You, if you embarrass a Suma, you have to pay. The Rebbe Yehuda, we know, says in says somewhere else yeah. that Suma ain't like boy, says you don't have to pay. So the Mishnah can't put with Rebbe Yehuda. El alav Rebbe Shimonim. The Mishnah has to be Rebbe Shimonim. And, and indeed it does fit. According to Rebbe Shimon, he was the third opinion of the Brisa. Rebbe Shimon said that the, 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 the rich people, you view them as if they've gone down in their Nechosim, and the poor people even less than that. Basically, we do make the evaluation on the person's financial status and that is the opinion of Rebbe Shimon in the Mishnah. Yeah. Go on. 
Um, I'm, I'm not about a chayish. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll see in the next Mishnah. When we, we see that, we'll see a little bit. Seems that a chayish isn't really spoken about. I don't think in Boishas. It seems that he's got Boishas, but a Suma, maybe since he can't see the embarrassment, maybe maybe is he could hear. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Yeah. Right. We could see, it could be that there's some discussion that maybe Suma is actually Potter, not necessarily because there's no Boishas, maybe it's like a special Gazera Sakosu, it's a special like Limud from the Torah that maybe the Torah says that you're not supposed to give him, but we'll, perhaps we'll see that on a base. We'll see. Right. Right. The second category was that we look at the financial status of everybody. And if you don't have to evaluate the money that you have, you I think we do. We evaluate them on the scale of where they are. Could be, but uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, um, I think according to Rabbi Yehuda, I don't know whether you have to make boundaries of this between this and this, but uh, you, you look at. Yeah, according to the assets. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yes, Rabbi Yaakov. Hmm. Right, right. It's an interesting. Rabbi Yaakov's make it an interesting deal because it's a godla lefi godla, a cotton lefi cotton. Isn't a furish that it's talking about monetary assets? We'd have to look further into the Rishonim to see if they if they make that deal. But 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 it could be it could be there's more involved in there. That could be. We'll, we'll leave that open. In any event, um, oh, so the Mishnah can't be Rabbi Yehuda was saying. Because Rabbi Yudha said that, that uh, the Suma hasn't got Boishas, and therefore it's Rabbi Shimon. Good. Now the Gemara wants to argue the second wide line, second last uh, narrow line, excuse me, which starts Rabbi Shimon Heat. That's where we're up to. Afilu Temu Rabbi Yehuda. We could actually be fitting our Mishnah with Rabbi Yehuda. He on Rabbi Yehuda, Suma aim like Boishas. When did Rabbi Yehuda say that a blind person is not getting Boishas? La Mishkal Mine. That a Suma that does damage, we do not, does not have to pay for Boishas. The Mishkal name is to take from him. To take from a Suma, we will not take the money from the Suma. I think the Pshat is probably because it's not so, you know, you're not so embarrassed maybe when it's through a blind person. So therefore he doesn't have to pay for Boishas. But the Gemara wants to argue, the Gemara is not going to stick with this, but the Gemara wants to argue that maybe Rabbi Yudha agrees that a Suma can collect Boishas. So if a Suma is collecting Boishas, really the Mishnah, which says that I'm a Vaish as a Suma, our Mishnah, or the next Mishnah, says if you're a Vaish, you're a Suma, you pay Boishas, that could fit with Debi Yehuda. And therefore, the way you evaluate the Boishas also could fit with Debi Yehuda. That's what the Gemara wants to argue right now. Again, Rabbi Yehuda said a statement, uh, Suma ain loy Boishas. Suma ain loy Boishas. That's somewhat ambiguous. So the Gemara wants to argue, ain loy Boishas, to collect Boishas, excuse me, to give Boishas, he doesn't have to give Boishas. But to collect it, he will collect it. And therefore, our Mishnah, which also says the Suma collects, can fit with Rabbi Yehuda. But the Gemara wants to argue that's not so, um, <clears throat> it's not so good. It's not, not, not so glad. Why? Because the Hamid, the Gatani Sefer, the, the, the Sefer of the Mishnah says, as we're going to see on Amad Beis, I'm a Vayish Esta Yoshon Chayev, someone who embarrasses somebody who is asleep, right? Your friend's sleeping, you decide to do X, Y, Z, 
on that person who is sleeping and that embarrasses them, you are chayiv for that, right? But yoshon shebiyesh potter. However, if a yoshon is doing the busha, a person is asleep, and through the extending of their limbs or whatever you do when you're asleep, he manages to embarrass somebody, he is potter for that. In any event, the Mishnah clearly speaks out if the, if the, if the yoshon is on the, <coughs> if the yoshon is the victim, there is a payment of boishas. And if a yoshon is doing the, if a sleeping person is doing the, 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 the boishas, he's potter. That's in, one second, veloikatani sumo shebiyesh potter. In the same Mishnah, which we said that um, that Amavayish um, Esasuma, you pay, right? The same Mishnah spoke out that a Yoshan who's Mavayish is Potter, and if you Mavayish a Yoshan, you are Chai. Basically, the Mishnah specified by a sleeping person, if he does it, and if it gets done to him, what's the, in one case is Potter, one case is Potter, and by Suma, it didn't specify, it just said clearly Chai. So the Gemara assumes that that means that if a sumo is on either end of the, either scale of the thing, if he's doing it or if he's getting it, he is going to get the boishas. And therefore that does not fit with Rabbi Yehuda. Michlal, the loishna hochi, the loishna hochi. And the fact that the Mishnah didn't split it up with a sumo and say if he's on the victim, then he's going to get it off. He's, if he's doing it, he's not going to pay or whatever. Didn't say that. Sounds like in all cases the sumo pays. Elam achavarta, misnison, Rabbi Shimani. Rather, the correct answer is what we started off with. That the Mishnah fits with Rabbi Shimon, the Mishnah does not fit with Rabbi Yehuda, but the fact that Rabbi Yehuda says that Suma doesn't get Boishas, and the Mishnah says that it does give Boishas, and the Mishnah sounds like in all cases he's going to give Boishas, he's going to get Boishas, and Rabbi Yehuda said at least in one case you're not getting Boishas, so the Mishnah doesn't fit with Rabbi Yehuda, it fits with Rabbi Shimon. That is the first Chalik of the Sukkot. Good. Now we're at the two dots, third wide line. Man Tana Lahada Tana Rabbonin. Who is the Tana? Who is the author of the opinion that holds of the, of the following price? Right? I think right now we think it's talking about literally a small a small child or a small person and a big person. Person had kavana to be mavayish a cotton, and he ended up being mavayish a goblin. This normally could happen in one of two cases um, that there's two people in front of him, a goblin and a cotton. And he wanted to be mavayish the cotton. Uh, I don't know. He wanted to maybe rip the clothes or spit. We saw it. We, he wanted to spit in front of the cotton. Let's use that example, which is an, a form of embarrassment for him. And he ended up spitting in front of the goddess. So he actually caused more boishas than he planned on doing. Then, noisein le goddol, you, you for sure have to pay the goddol because he's the one you embarrassed. The may boish toy shell cotton. You have to give to the goddol the amount of the boishas that would have caused the cotton. Because that's all you had in mind to do. We're going to see also in the next Mishnah that Boishas is has to have you had Kavana to do it. Special, special Kavana. Not, it's not even enough that you were negligent in whatever action you did, which you need for all the Chiyuvim, but you actually had to have Kavana for this specific action of Boishas. And therefore, you're only Chayev in accordance to how much Kavana you had to do. And you wanted him in Mavayash cotton, even though you ended up causing more Boishas than you wanted, you only paid for how much you intended to do. Okay? Or, or you wanted him a Vayish and Eved. Yeah, there was an Eved and a Ben Chorin standing in front of you. You wanted to be a Vayish, Mr. Eved. And you ended up being a Vayish, Mr. Ben Chorin, who is more boishes. How much do you pay? Nois and Ben Chorin to make boish toy shell Eved. You'll give to the Ben Chorin the amount of embarrassment that you would have caused to Eved because that is the amount you had Kavana in causing. Now, the Gemara wants to know who is this price according to money. Loy Rebbe Meir, Loy Rebbe Yehuda, Loy Rebbe Shimon. The Gemara seems to think now it doesn't fit according to anybody. Not Rebbe Meir, not Rebbe Yehuda, not Rebbe Shimon. Why? Says the Gemara, because Salka Daitach, Salka Daitach always means we think originally, the Hava Mina is, our original pre- first understanding is, which normally means it's going to change, but the original understanding is cotton, cotton, but nechosin. This is a bit similar to what Rabbi Yaakov said before. Here the Gemara sees that clearly when the price says cotton, it means cotton benachosi. Godol means godol benachosi. That's what it means. We're not talking about a small person and a big person, a, a, a minor and an adult. We're not talking about that. We're referring to a person with small stature in financial assets and someone who's got more financial assets. And, and what does the price say that you pay according to um, whatever whatever it was what you had in mind to do to, to be embarrassed the smaller financially smaller less assets person that's how much you pay 
for the bigger person. So ha- let's see how it goes according to you. Ebi Meir, if you're going to say Ebi Meir, Ha'ama Kulu Bahadi Adadi Nino. Ebi Meir, we know, was the first opinion of the first price that equates everybody when it comes to Boishas. Doesn't look at assets, just equates everybody. But E Rebbe Yehuda, if it's so, seemingly it should fit with Rebbe Yehuda very nice. Because Rebbe Yehuda is the one that said, I got a lovely God, look, I got a lovely God. It should fit very good according to him. Says the Gemara, different problem. Ha'oma ein la'avodim boishas. Rebbe Yehuda holds, similar to what we said a little bit about a sumer before, Rebbe Yehuda also says that an Eved has not got boishas. An Eved does not, I think it means, let's say, collect boishas. That also could be that it's learned out from the Gezeir of Um <clears throat> That might be in the Gemara a bit, a bit, a bit later, or perhaps it means that an ever anyway isn't of such, such high, you know, moral standards. So for such a person, he's got no standards. So there's no boishes in him. In any event, Rabbi Yudah says that ever does not collect boishes. So therefore, how could the Brisa say in the second case of the Brisa, Mitzchavim Levayish Esa Eved Ubiish Esa Ben Choyrin? You pay to the Ben Choyrin the amount it would have of embarrassment that you caused the Eved. But Rabbi Yudah holds an Eved's got no Boishas. Yeah. Rabbi Yudah holds that Eved's got no boishas. So therefore, one second, so therefore, how can you pay to the Ben Choyrin the amount you had Kavana to do for the Eved, when if you would do it to the Eved, you wouldn't be paying any boishas because ain't let Eved boishas, so really it comes out let's say you've got no Kavana to do any boishas, so why should you be paying? So that's why it doesn't go according to Rabbi Yudah. Yes, Bor. Uh, but the, but who suffered? But you have to evaluate it. Of course, as the parent said before, it's a feeling. The feeling is for sure by the eved. And if there's no feeling of boishes by the eved, let's say the gemara thinks now there's no feeling of boishes by the eved, so there's no boishes over here. If it will be monetary value like nezek or unemployment value, then you're right. But then we would factor in the fact that there's the odon over here and the master. But when it comes to boishes, that's the personal feeling. If you mazik an ever that's got no personal feelings, there's no, there's going to be no um, chiv to the odon either. I will give you an example. If the ever is very, very, very strong and you cause him a, 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 some sort of thing that doesn't cause him any nezek, you won't pay the odon, even though we, we, we evaluate that nezek according to, he's the victim at the end of the day. He's the victim. Fine. So therefore, it wouldn't fit according to Rebbe Yehuda, because Rebbe Yehuda says, Ain la vodin boishas. But Rebbe Shimon, if it's a Rebbe Shimon, there's another technical problem why it couldn't be Rebbe Shimon. Let's see why. Ha'oman is chavin levayish ezeh ubiish ezeh pota. The Gemara assumes that according to Rebbe Shimon's opinion, we'll see why in a second, if you have kavana to, to damage Shimon or Reuben, and you end up, excuse me, embarrassed Shimon, basically you, you wanted to embarrass someone. And you ended up embarrassing somebody else, which is the case of the Brisa. Rabbi Shimon is the opinion that you are Potter. You're Potter in such a case. You're, you're lacking, obviously, the fundamental, fundamental Kavana according to Rabbi Shimon. How do we know Rabbi Shimon holds that? My timer, Kukatola. Katola means like Ritzicha, like killing, like die. My Ritz Katola ad the Mishavin Lei. Rabbi Shimon is the opinion, if you've ever learned Sanhedrin and other places, I think it came up in Ulster, maybe early in Babakama. That Rabbi, Sh- Rabbi Shimon is the opinion that you are not high of Misa. There's no death penalty for Roitzeach if he wanted to kill Reuben and he ended up killing Shimon. You know, you were aiming the gun at Reuben and then it slipped when he pulled the trigger and it went to kill Shimon. So Machloikis, I believe, Rabbi Shimon is of the opinion that you do. there's no Chi of Misa in that case. There's no Chi of Misa in that case. The Chsiv, the Gemara here brings them a call for it. For Orav Loi, become Olav. Ad she Yitzchaven Loi. I think the the, the Orav law is extra, if I'm not mistaken. It could have just said, but this is in the Pasuk of, of, of a murder, by the way. If we just read the Pasuk I've got on the side of my Gemara, the person hates his friend, the Orav law, and he, and he ambushes, he, 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 he plots to kill him, and he stands on him, then he goes to the Irmiklat, but anyways, or he gets, he gets a key of Misa if it's for Mason. In any event, uh, it says over there extra words for Arab Loy, and Rabbi Shimon Darshan add she is Loy. Until you have Kavana for him, then there's a key of Misa. I think I wants to compare so to the Boishes. Boishes Nami add she mechaven Loy. You also, according to Shimon, there's only a key if you have Kavana for the person to do. Let's not get confused. I said before that you have to have Kavana to do Boishes, to be a Chayv in Boishes, and that's true according to everyone. Right, but what happens if you had Kavana to be Mavaish? Just you ended up being Mavaish somebody else, 
That's the Machloikis. According to Rabbanon, you still pay because you have the Kavana, enough Kavana to pay. And if Shimon holds, it's not enough, this general Kavana has to be a specific Kavana for the person who you were uh, embarrassed. <laughs> Just like he holds by, by Ritzicha, by murder, you, you, the he of Misa, of, of the Rosayach, the death penalty, is only if he had Kavana for this victim. And if he chose for him and he killed somebody else, there's no he and Misa. So to Boishis, is the same thing. If you Shimon, you, you're not Chai Boishis if you planned on embarrassing Reuben and ended up embarrassing Shimon, there's no Boishis. The Chsiv, the Gemara brings the Makor for Reb Shimon, That's actually the parasha where we learn out the whole he of Boishis is from this parasha. The fact that when two men are having a fight and they're, they're, they're having a fight and, and the wife of one of them comes and tries to save the, the, the victim and he, she ends up embarrassing the, the, the person who was fighting with him. In any event, it says that you, uh, that there's, there's a chiv to pay. She says she extended her hand and she grabbed him in a, in a unsanua place and she caused some embarrassment. Basically, we say, I think it says, she, she, she grabbed him in, in his in his, uh, in his place, in his embarrassing place, and therefore there's also Rabbi Shimon Darshan from here, Ad she is tavin loy. Until the is only when you had it kavana for the person that you were going against. Basically, with that, the Brisa says, uh, the Brisa says two dinim, a ratio and a safer. Similar cases. If you had kavana to do a cotton and you ended up doing a godl, you pay the godl the amount of the cotton. That was the ratio. And the safe was if you had kavanah to be mavayish an eved, and then you mavayish the ben choyim and you pay the ben choyim and the may eved. Who's the brayser going according to? We think now that the god and cotton mean monetary value. So according to the mayor, it certainly doesn't fit because the mayor says monetary value. We don't look at voices. We equate everybody. It can't fit according to Rabbi Yehuda because Rabbi Yehuda was the one that said that an eved doesn't get voices. So we think that right now that means that there's no valuation of a tool of an eved doing voices. So the safer doesn't fit because the safer said. Nishaven for an Eved, and then you ended up doing a Ben Choyrin, you pay the Ben Choyrin, the amount of the Eved. So according to Rabbi Huda, there's no amount of an Eved, and it doesn't fit according to Rabbi Shimon, because Rabbi Shimon says, Bichlal, when you had Kavana for Mr. A, and you ended up doing Mr. B, you don't pay them anything, whether it's an Eved, a Ben Choyrin, a Cotton, or a Godol, anywhere, anytime. If you didn't have Kavana for the specific person to be Mabayish, then there is no Chiv Boishas according to Rabbi Shimon. Yes, Rabbi Yaakov. So, so in the case of the lady, She did, and that's right. And therefore, she does pay. Exactly, and there is and only exactly. And therefore, she did have to run and did not pay damage. That would hold the point. A hundred points. That, that's according to everybody. Reb Shimon learns from there. Davka, she pays because there was kavon. But if there wouldn't be kavon specific to him, then you wouldn't know. Yeah. Well, where, where do we get this idea that you actually pay for a lesser, in, Rab- in Rabbanon sheet, the Rabbanon says that if you had Kavana for A and you do B, you do pay. But why did you pay only a smaller amount, are you asking? I think because that's all you had Kavana to do. The Chi of Boishas, according to everybody, is only when there was Kavana involved. So you're, the amount you're going to be liable is according to the amount of Kavana you had in mind. If you had in mind to be Mavaish, a small person or a small fi- a financially low stature person, then you can never be mechai to be more boishes than that because it's always behet m in a co- in correspondence to the amount of kavon you had. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think you're referring to a case of misasik. Yeah, a misasik the Gemara in in, in Pesachim mentions yeah if you miskaven lach toich esa mechuba a chotach esa tolosh you wanted to cut it off you thought it was mechuba and it ended up being tolosh is that what you're referring to misasik could be that you that that could be slightly different that could be that here we're talking about that could be you thought that this object was X but this object actually ended up being Y that could be different. Not either. Okay. So okay. 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 Fine. That could. Yeah. It could be. Uh, it could be similar. We just have to know whether we can. We completely make a parallel between what we say in Shabbos to what we say over here in the Zikin. 
Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure fully about that. But in Nazikin, Rabbi Shimon is the opinion. I say Nazikin because that's quite also the Chiyav Ritzicha, um, which is also kind of Nezek, a big Nezek. So there Rabbi Shimon holds the opinions. The, the, the Chiyav is only when you had come on for the specific victim and not when it was a different victim. I don't know about Shabbos, how it can fully confess. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're over. I mean, over here you also did the did the crime over here. You wanted to embarrass Ruin and you embarrass Shimon. No, but then what I'm saying though is that what I'm saying Also in Shabbos, you have another question of Malech Machsheves and, and, and another Gedorim are involved. So, yeah, yeah, 100%. Good. So we still, we're stuck. Who is this price? Rabbi, can I ask you a question? Yes. Right. The, the, if somebody insults, uh, uh, wants to try and humiliate a Eved, and he, a Ruvin, he want, Ruvin wants to humiliate the Eved, and he humiliates Shimon instead, he calls him all the so souls under the sun, now, the humiliation, he gets paid out the, the price of an Eved, which lowers the state, status of Shimon. He's calling Shimon as low as a, an Eved. Right. He, it's true. He, what, what, so, what so, so therefore, according to another price, he should get paid according to Shimon's status, not a uh, Eved's status. Right. What, what, right. What, Alan is pointing out correctly that, you know, if he thought he was an Eved, it could be that he bowed bad mouth the victim. And then it ends up bad mouthing the Ben Chorim, which is seemingly much more. It is true that it's much more, but at, at the end of the day, the Kavana was missing. So if the Kavana was missing, according to the Rabban on Shita, then you would pay the higher amount. But according to Rabbi Shimon, since the Kavana is lacking, um, you didn't have in mind to do it more than what you were going to do to the Eved. So Rabbi Shimon holds that you, you, you don't pay the extra amount. You, you're indeed right. It will be less. But it's, 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 it's exempt from paying more because the, you were missing the fundamental kavana that you need. The, the, the intention wasn't there according to Rebbe Shimon. But yeah, you are right, it would end up being less. Yeah. Um, so the Gemara says we can fit it with someone. The Gemara first wants us, let's just start four lines, I think, in the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's where we're up to. Rebbe Yehuda. We could fit with Rebbe Yehuda. What do we say was the problem with fitting with Rebbe Yehuda was? The Rebbe Yehuda holds that an Eved doesn't collect Boishas. They do not collect Boishas. Here the Gemara is suggesting that Rebbe Yehuda never meant that an Eved has got no feelings and he's got no Boishas because he's just so low. No. Rebbe, Shimon saying, Rebbe Yehuda is saying a halacha that an Eved doesn't collect Boishas. If I'm not mistaken, I didn't, didn't get time to check. It's some sort of maybe Gezeris HaKosov which means to say some sort of limud that the Torah says, and ever does not collect voice. It doesn't mean to say that he's got no feelings and he suffers no embarrassment. There is some form of suffering of embarrassment, but there's no payment made for it. So the Gemara is suggesting, therefore, that you can make the shuma, you can make the evaluation of how much kavana he had to do over here. In other words, this chavain to, to be embarrassed to Ebed, and that caused some level of embarrassment, and that's how much you'll pay to the Ben Choyrin. Even though you're right, if it would have been for the, for the Ebed, you wouldn't have paid him. But there was embarrassment there. So therefore, there was a kavana of some level of embarrassment. That amount you can pay for the Ben Choy. That's what the Gemara, the first Gemara wants to answer. The first answer of the Gemara that it can fit the Kondi Rebbe Yehuda. The Ibo Yisayim, another answer. Afilu Tema Rebbe Meir. We could fit even with Rebbe Meir. The problem we had with Rebbe Meir was everybody's equal. If everybody's equal, then why are we saying that you pay a god or if you god, uh, if you mischavim, nevayish as a cotton, you pay that amount, which we thought that was the Gemara said in the beginning. We thought in the beginning, cotton meant cotton, cotton meant a chosim. Godel, godel, meant a chosim. We're now going to change that. A few of them are Rebbe Meir. Me, Savras, godel, godel, meant a chosim. Cotton, cotton, meant a chosim. Do you really think that the Bryce cement, godel, godel, meant a chosim, cotton, cotton, meant a chosim? Loy, godel, godel, mamush. Cotton, cotton, mamush. It's referring to a, to a, to a godel, an adult. 
an adult or a minor. The Gemara is arguing that that even maybe Meir agrees that there's different levels of boishes between an adult and an infant and a child and a minor. In other words, even though he may have equated everybody when it came to financial evaluation, that he does equate everybody, but he agrees that there is a difference in the amount of boishas if you cause an adult than if you cause a minor. So therefore, that does fit with, the Bryce does fit with every male. The Gemara asks, the cotton, <coughs> one second, the cotton bar boishas, who is a cotton, a bar boishas? Does a cotton get embarrassed? The Gemara says, yes, in Kedah Omer Papa, the Michlu may Michla. The Papa says a statement, Achanami the Michli lay Michlam, that in certain circumstances, if you try to embarrass the child or tease them a little bit and try and embarrass them, they will they will become embarrassed. And therefore, there is voices by a cotton, and that is the amount you'll pay if you had Kavana to um, do that amount to a cotton. That's the amount you'll pay if you ended up doing it to a goblin. Yes, parents had a question. Back to the previous bit. If a slave is embarrassed, Rabbi Yehuda holds ain la avod in boishes. There will be no payment of boishes, even to the even to the master. I believe. Uh, it, see, it would seem that the the, the, the other opinion is that yes la avod in boishes, and who does it go to? If you embarrass your cutter, a minor, yeah, right, right, it goes to the father only that he should hold it in a fund the for the cotton. Yeah. It really is going to the cotton, but it goes to the father also, almost like an apple or whatever to hold it to look after it as, as a fund. But by the by the evidence, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I would, the question is if, if we say Masha Connor Evid, Connor Raboy, even for the payment of boisterous. Perhaps we do. I'm not, uh, I'd have to look into that. I'm not sure. Let's make a start at the next Mishnah on Daf Pei Vav, Ahmed Beis, and we'll see the Mishnah. Hamavayish Esa Oroin, Hamavayish Esa Suma, Hamavayish Esa Yoshon, Chayat. Three cases, a continuation of Boishas. One who is Mavayish and Oroin, someone who is naked, someone who's not properly dressed, who you would think maybe is already in some sort of embarrassed state. But you go ahead and embarrass them more, you do have to pay. Because even though they were in an embarrassed state, but you, Lemaissa, cause more embarrassment, so you have to pay. If you, if, you, if you embarrass a blind person, we spoke about this before, you also have to pay because they suffer from embarrassment. If you embarrass someone who was sleeping, you also have to, have to pay. But when does the embarrassment, by the way, kick in? When they wake up, right? When they wake up, they're embarrassed. And then you, then you have to pay because you cause that embarrassment. The Gemara actually asks, speaks about a case if you embarrass someone and, and then they died in their sleep, do you have to pay them or not? Because they never actually suffered the embarrassment. The Gemara will speak about that. Interesting, interesting question. And then in all these three cases, the boishas you are chayiv, the yoshon should be a potter. A yoshon who is mevayish is potter. This could be even referring to a case where he was negligent when he went to sleep and he went to sleep in a way that's likely he might cause some embarrassment, in which case if he caused nezek, for example, he would be chayiv to pay it. And, and probably the other three, the other things also, Ripui, Sheves, and, um, <clears throat> and Sa'ar, you would have to pay. But Boishas is a special thing, as we said above. Boishas needs Kavana, and someone who's asleep lacks that Kavana. Nofal mina gag, the Hizek ubiesh. Someone fell from the gag. Yochayev ala nezek, upota ala Boishas. Over here is referring to, I think, some of Horsham say that you fell with the Ruach Metsuya. In other words, it, it wasn't an abnor abnormally strong wind that came and it was complete unexpected oiliness. No, it was an expected thing. You were standing on a very tight, balanced roof or whatever, and a normal strength of a wind came. That's called a ruach metsuya. A regular wind comes and blew you off the gag, in, in, in which case you fell. That's why you were chayv on nezek, but you are potter on voices, because again, you don't have that higher level of intention to do it. Ad Unless you had kavana, I think unless you fell in a certain way that's clear that you wanted to fall in a way that you would embarrass, then there was kavana involved. Then even if you fell, you would be um, you would be chayiv to pay with the kavana. So that's the case. Of, that's the things of the Mishnah. We'll start a little bit. The Gemara, Tana Rabban and Abraisa, Bishoy Orum Chayiv. If you embarrass someone who's naked, you are chayiv, like we just said. But you should just know, even though you're chayiv to pay, it's going to be less than if you if you embarrass the person who was clothed. 
because they were already in some sort of an embarrassing state, so the evaluation will be less. Similarly, Bishoyma based on Merchat, if you embarrass someone while you were in the shower house or whatever, also a place where maybe it's also not so, you know, it's not such a place where people are so makhbed on how they look and what they're doing, and it's a somewhat state of embarrassment already, but you're still chayev. However, you should know that it's not going to be the same amount of someone who's mavayish in the base of Merchat as if you're mavayish them in the shuk. Because in the shuk, is of course, in front of everybody, everyone's looking, everyone's paying attention more, not a place where you're getting undressed, showering and doing whatever, then in the shuk, it's going to be worth more. Okay, we'll stop here for today. Um, unfortunately, tomorrow, I will not be able to say the shir. I'm sorry. Um, I have, uh, I have other commitments that I have to deal with and I can't really avoid. So, all the best to one and all. Thank you, Rabbi. Thanks, Alan. No problem. Thank you. All the best.